Hi guys, what's going on? It's Jesse here from Keep It Reet. Welcome back to the Keep It Reet YouTube channel. The Barrow Ags is back in the factory. Uh, Corey, Josh, and Jason were just in SA for high tech round two. I unfortunately couldn't make it because I had the bloody spicy cough. That's back for some overhauling and week out from World Time Attack Challenge up in Sydney. One of the biggest uh, motorsport events in Australia and they, they do a drift series as well. So it's a huge event that Jason's going to be driving. We're all going to be heading up there next Thursday. It's going to be a massive one and uh, we're going to be going through the Barrow Wags, prepping it, going over it after its first big competition. So Jason ended up getting third. It was a good weekend. Corey, do you want to say anything about your weekend away? Um, yeah, it was your, good. Your S SA Gruner dogged us. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, the, the WAGs performed like ridiculously good, especially like first competition. Um, yeah, she's a beast. Well, there's a couple little issues, yeah. which I think we've gone through, but the clutch, hence why the gearbox and everything is out, uh, the slave lines, which, oh, where's, oh no, it's under the car, yeah. isn't it? So the slave lines were actually stopping it from completely engaging the clutch, so they were hitting this. There's yeah, a, a bit of interference, so... There is a notch in the bell housing, but <laughs> it turns out they hit yeah. that instead, which was, yeah, just stopping it, and he, like, the clutch feel was a bit weird, and as you've seen maybe in the video for his victory <laughs> skid, he uh, slipped it a little bit at yeah. first, but... Yeah, so the, the clutch was getting held on a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I think Corey fixed it at one point because the lines moved a little bit and started binding. Yeah. Um, and so they had it pretty good, but I think it caused some excessive wear on the clutch. So Corey's pulled the box off because I've been a sick boy. Uh, he's got the clutch out. He's hit up MPC. They're sending out some fresh plates just so they're um, they're crispy, ready to go. It's had a lot of heat. A lot of heat. Like the flywheels the same, like all coloured, all the bloody. These discs are all coloured up and everything, so... The plates still got plenty of meat on them. Um, yeah. Well, that's the thing, like, it, it was it was doing weird shit Saturday, and then, like, we fiddled with it, and then it was still wasn't perfect, but, and it was never completely engaged, so, you know, hats, off, down 50, hats off to the clutch, because... Slow down 50 still, kilowatts, mate. Well, yeah, he said <laughs> it felt like once we fixed it a little bit, like, the car felt heaps yeah. better, because it was like, it just had that little bit of slip where it wasn't allowing it to go full tilt. Oh, yes. Very good, very nice. <laughs> very good, very nice. So, yeah, got new plates coming, just to be safe. Uh, they've sent the dump pipe off to get ceramic coated, try to get some more heat management going. If you look. Melted. Melted. Melted, Melted. But I think that was because the exhaust gas. But yeah, we got, got a bit of a list to um, just go through, so we'll take you along for the ride. Uh, we got to clean out their kilos of rubber that it's uh, collected. Absolutely shredded. Cook's tyres. Cook's tyres. Just cool. Um, Corey's cut more foam out of the fuel cell so that the fuel level sender stops getting caught up on it so we can get an accurate fuel level, fuel level reading. They bent some uh, bent some stuff in the front end when they had contact with Dale Campaign. So there's this spacer thing that goes on the knuckle and control arm. It's a little bit squished and one of the main bolt that holds the lower control arm to the knuckle was bent. I threw it in the bin, but this is a replacement one. I'm gonna get some spares of them. And it bent a steering rack end, tie rod, I believe. So I put a new one of them in. Little bits and pieces, go over the car, nut and bolt it, compression test it, tidy up things and hey, enough blabbering on. Let's get some shit done. So I just pulled the turbo off, just lent it forward. Uh, I'm gonna put in some longer studs. So slightly longer, so we can use these locking nuts that we usually use. Um, the other ones weren't long enough for these tabs to grab, so I didn't bother. But we're gonna put in the longer ones, lock tight the studs in, and use these locking stainless nuts on there. Genuine T3 gasket that we use, nice and thick boy. So go ahead, whack all that in and uh, she shouldn't be coming loose anytime soon. All right, with the turbo studs, uh, I'm waiting for Amron to drop off some Inconel long studs that go from a 1.5 mil 
thread pitch in the manifold to a 1.25 thread pitch for our stainless locking nuts or in canal locking nuts, whatever they are. Uh, in the meantime, I went ahead and pulled the axles out of the rear end. Didn't film anything, but ripped the axles out just to look over them. They look as new as the time we put them in the car, so that is good. While I had them out, I uh, measured them and cut our spare ones to length. Just had to dock off about 30 mil off the spline. So I've cut our spares to length. Um, also went ahead and pulled the flywheel off, installed a new rear main on the barra, uh, and then bolted the flywheel back on, torqued it up. Of course, got our beautiful Maculec Industries uh, flywheel bolt retaining clip. It's pretty gangster and uh, they will never come loose, which is a big problem with these barras. Also had the slave slid it over the box and tighten the shit out of these lines in the position where the fittings will clear when the slave goes back. Obviously they must have come loose and shimmied down a bit and they started hitting the gearbox when the slave tries to go back. So it shouldn't be an issue. Also clearance the uh, bow housing just a wee bit more just to give us extra room for the new position of the fittings. Yeah, she's getting there. So I'll get those studs for the turbo, get new gasket and our locking nuts on there so we won't have any issues there. Uh, just waiting on the fresh clutch place to be sent out by MPC. They're due Monday, we're leaving 4 a.m. Thursday morning. It's getting aligned Wednesday by Marcus down at Traction Tires and Auto. I think that's right. So you've got to be on the trailer Tuesday night uh, and off to the alignment. So hopefully we get those clutch plates. We're waiting on Stewie from Acostal to send out the little chamfered spaces that go in here that got bent. That should be about it. Still waiting on some more bolts to be ordered in as well. We've got the one, but we want some spares. I got some socks for the fluid reservoirs. They ended up cable tying um, rags over the fluid reservoirs, like the brake clutch and whatnot. Uh, so couldn't find any actual socks unless I ordered them online. So I went to Rebel and got some sweatbands. They're identical to the socks you buy. So we got some Nike sweatbands on all the reservoirs to stop any weepage. Um, yeah, just gonna be going over everything, making sure it's sweet. We've got to re-bleed the, the front handbrake because it goes both directions if you haven't seen it. Because it's not locking the fronts up too well. Do a compression test, boost leak test. Done the diff fluid, the gearbox, engine fluids, check all the, well, clean the fuel filter, change all the other fuel to filters edge. Progress, getting close. Turbo is back on now with the in canal studs and the stainless locking nuts, so she won't be coming off anytime soon. Um, right now, working on a new streamer pipe, so our current titanium ones, they come out of the car in a bit of an angle, which you're not allowed, technically, uh, for world time attack. So we're just gonna mock up a stainless single one that comes straight up just in case we need to use it. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna chop up the old R32 exhaust that's got this two and a half inch stainless and make something work just so it comes straight up. All right, the, uh, the makeshift screamer pipe is complete. So it goes something like that and shoots straight up. Got the X in there, so if the uh, scrutineers don't like the ones that shoot backwards, we got this backup one. We had the dump pipe ceramic coated to try to keep the heat down. She just, she's getting bloody warm. So got that on there. I don't know if I showed you the uh, the Nike reservoir socks we got there. Dang. Still waiting on clutch plates. I put this side of the suspension back together with the new bolts and we've raised it 10 mil and gone a bit stiffer all around. Next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna try and make a front lip, another lip for the lip. This is lower. Because at the moment, the front of the body kit is a bit higher than the rest of the car. So Jason reckons you get a series don't know front bar. This is one of the R31 front bars, whichever one that one isn't and you chop this bottom, no, this is the top, no, this is the bottom section of it, and the number plate goes there. Cut this out, 
and like flip it and it will become like a lip and it's you know got some holes and stuff so it's it's a lip on there so we're gonna do that so this is kind of what we're gonna be looking at with that front lip it's pretty aggressive and it's not gonna get on the trailer oh. but uh yeah so we're gonna trim it up mount it somehow and then pull it off and sand it and Jace will come spray it up because he reckons he's good at painting things but I don't know. I don't want the responsibility of painting things anyway. Alright, the uh, add-on lip is primed. I'm going to let that dry and then give it a fine sand down and then get the bowl cement out here to spray it up. We just had the new clutch plates arrive which is Kang. So they're the clutch plates themselves and then the fingers. Um, yeah. See, obviously there's still heaps of meat left on the old clutch, but we got new ones. So I'm gonna go ahead, go bolt the fingers into the clutch cover, pressure plate thing, clean up the internal pressure plates, and then slap it back in the car. Get the box back on, slave, exhaust, tidy that up. Clutch is in. Quick shout out to MPC for being super, super helpful and easy to deal with, getting us fresh plates and fingers in record timing. And uh, yeah, she should be good to go. We'll get the box in there, slave back on. So we've got spare clutch plates now if we need them, which is good. We're getting there. We're getting there. Great. World time attack prep is almost done. Hoi! You came for the weekend, mate? Yeah, keen to go back to the old uh, stomping grounds. The old stomping grounds. Got the F250 pretty much loaded up. Took the wagon to Marcus to add traction tires. This morning he's been aligning it, so we'll go grab it now. Got the Tri Ace tires, of course. Jason's favourite tire to run on the wagon. Stupid amount of grip. We have acquired the wagon again. Huge shout out to Traction Tires and more. Marcus McCarthy, always setting her up, getting her dialed in for Jason to rip it. Yeah, if you're in the east side of Melbourne, make sure you come down here if you're after any sort of alignment for any sport of motorsport, or you're just after some tires, they're a major distributor for Yokohama. And yeah, they're definitely the best in the business when it comes to alignments and setting these cars up. So make sure you come down, check them out, and uh, you can find them on Instagram and Facebook as well now. So check that out, show some support. They bloody know what they're doing down here. Loaded up, yeah. ready to go, son. Are you ready, boy? Are you ready? Number one qualifier. Are you ready? Number um, one world time attack. Manifest it. Manifestation. Ooh. We're ready, road trip. 4 a.m. tomorrow, we get up. Okay. Ooh. Big trippers, Sydney. Stay tuned, too. Like that ass. Subscribe that ass. I don't know what else to say. You covered all the bases. That's <laughs>